Welcome to Vintage Lunchbox Reviews, a show in which I review my vintage lunchboxes. It's right there in the name. Uh, Armageddon and Deep Impact, Tombstone and Wyatt Earp, A Bug's Life and Ants. There are many examples of two very similar things coexisting in the same timeline. Uh, and two of those that happened in the 1970s and 1980s were two very different but very lovable fat orange cats one of them that you probably know is garfield and the other slightly less popular is this fellow this is heathcliff uh heathcliff was um actually uh created before garfield uh heathcliff uh, the first comic strip uh, for Heathcliff was in 1973. This was created by a man named George Gately. Garfield wasn't created until five years later by, as we all know, Jim Davis. Uh, Garfield really, even though it was a later comic strip, it broke out in popularity. It made uh the uh transfer to television first there were all those garfield television uh halloween uh, specials christmas specials you remember all the garfield specials and then um uh, so a lot of people remember that first but actually heathcliff made it to television first the very first heathcliff series began in 1980 uh, and then the second season it was renamed to heathcliff and marmaduke so the two of them teamed up and if you ever see those old episodes it's very has a very 70s cartoon feel that show ended in 82 and then two years later became heathcliff and Friends, um, which was, no, I'm thinking of Garfield and Friends. Uh, the second cartoon of Heathcliff was also just called Heathcliff, but it was in 84. So there was a, a two-year gap, and then it came back. Of course, Garfield and Friends didn't come out on television until uh, 1989. So, But uh, at the same time, in the same place, both in comic strips and those comic books, uh, not comic books, well, there were comic books, uh, but also those books that contained comic strips which were very popular uh popular i said uh, popular uh, at the time people really enjoyed those there were garfield ones and heathcliff ones um but uh so if you didn't if you were um let's say a uh, parent or grandparent that was out of touch you might think hey heathcliff and garfield same they're the same guy they're the same cat they're both uh, these little overweight orange cats but if you watched the shows or read the comic strips you knew that they were very very different garfield uh, didn't like leaving the house. He was this lazy cat. He just wanted to sit at home and sleep and, and be fed lasagna and um, uh, terrorize Odie and uh, his owner, uh, John Arbuckle. But um, Heathcliff was very different. Heathcliff was this uh, street smart cat. He is often uh, described as he wandered the streets. He was kind of a tough punk guy. He pulled pranks on people. Uh, and the owners were, uh, there was this grandparent couple named the nutmegs, <laughs> grandma and grandpa nutmeg. And then they had a grandson named Izzy. And so Izzy was Heathcliff's owner. So, uh, on this lunchbox here, we have, uh, Heathcliff, uh, one of the people that he would constantly, uh, uh, Badger, I suppose you could say, is the owner of the local fish market. And so here we have Heathcliff reclining on this pillow with a giant fish in his mouth. This would not be um, uncommon, something uncommon for Heathcliff. Although Heathcliff was much more, um, you know, action-oriented. He was always roaming the streets and getting into trouble and things. It wasn't like Garfield that was usually at home. Uh, but... <clears throat> This is not the side of the lunchbox I display. When I have it up on my lunchbox shelves, this is the side I display, which is much more exciting. And this is Heathcliff playing a variation of Space Invaders called Mouse Invaders. So uh, at the bottom, you can see Heathcliff has stacked up some bags of dog food. <laughs> So he has piled up that dog food there. He's standing on top of it and he is playing mouse invaders. In fact, you can see he has zapped a mouse right there and boy, is he happy about it. He's got his tongue wagging right there. So this is, um, uh, Heathcliff doing a couple of things he would 
would have been known to do. Obviously, this lunchbox was released in 1982, so it's capitalizing a little bit on the popularity of um, uh, video games, Space Invaders. That would have been super hot at this time. So we've got Heathcliff uh, with, um, you know, playing the Space Invaders. When I see this, I can hear his voice. By the way, in both... Uh, versions of the cartoon, the uh, 1981 and then the 1984 one, he was voiced by Mel Blanc. So um, if he sounds like he's got a little bit, almost a cross, um, a little bit of that uh, uh, raspiness, but he kind of has like a Sylvester voice almost, but that kind of Mel Blanc, it's just hard to ex explain, but if you hear it, you'll go, yep, that's Mel Blanc. So um, if we take a look at the artwork on here, there's something very, very strange uh, or unique about this one that's kind of different than some of the other launch boxes that I own and that I have shown. Um, we've got the typical, you know, this is kind of the, would be the least interesting uh, artwork here. And we can see there's Heathcliff and uh, some of the people from the comic strip and that's all. And then the Heathcliff logo there, but that's all kind of hidden underneath the handle. And that was, like I said, they would put something kind of uninteresting um, you know, they're not, not critical to the, uh, uh, other parts of the lunchbox. So, uh, every one of these Aladdin lunchboxes, as I mentioned, has artwork that goes all the way around the side. And what's interesting about this one is it's one long comic strip. And so if you start reading here, that's Izzy, uh, Heathcliff's owner. Um, and, uh, you can see here that, uh, he says, uh, give me your paw right there, right to, uh, uh, Heathcliff. And then he says, uh, uh, now give me your other paw, you know, and so he gives him the other paw. Look how happy Heathcliff is to uh, uh, be, uh, uh, you know, following these instructions here. And then he says, uh, sit up. And then he says, speak. And then he says, play dead. He's just doing all these crazy things. He's making Heathcliff do all these crazy things. And then when we get to the final panel here, uh, of course, there's uh, he says, chase your tail, you know, and he's doing this. Um, and then, uh, you know, then we see what's happening is, uh, Heathcliff is actually just dreaming about doing all these things. And, uh, uh, Izzy says, good boy. And then, uh, the last portion here, we have, uh, Izzy, uh, talking to another, uh, one of his friends and he says, boy, you must be having a terrible nightmare <laughs> because, uh, Heathcliff would have been doing all these things in real life. And you can see, uh, right there, uh, there's the, uh, um, uh, you know, all the action uh, going off there. So um, this would have been, if I were a child, I would say this would be very annoying because <laughs> kind of the, um, for me, I would think the idea, the enjoyable part of having a lunchbox is that no matter which direction it's facing, you would uh, enjoy the artwork. So if you were sitting at a lunch table and you had your, your lunchbox sitting up there, whoever's on this side would see a joke, but whoever is sitting over here would also see a joke. And whoever's sitting across from you would see this artwork and whoever's, uh, you know, you being on this side would see this artwork. So there was always, there was something on all the sides. Um, but this seems like it's going to promote people taking my lunchbox and rotating around to read the whole thing. And also once you've read it, it's kind of over. <laughs> it's not like looking at, um, you know, a fun piece of artwork and going, Oh, that's funny. You know? And then it, when you see it, you go, you could kind of imagine something happening in this, uh, you know, little action scene right here. But, uh, you know, when it's just a, a one line, I mean, a joke with a punchline, it's like, yeah, you kind of, you kind of know the joke. Um, the, I do own a thermos to this. It is not inside this one. And uh, there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is I own two Heathcliff lunchboxes. Now, in the words of Willy Wonka, you would think one is enough for anyone. And that is true. But I literally, right before hitting record, peeled a price tag off of this that said $10. So I ran across this at a uh, antique mall. And I honestly could not remember if this one was in better condition than the one I already own. So for $10, I thought, well, I will find out. So I have two that are in, um, very similar condition. The other one looks slightly worse, but is, um, it looks worse, but works better. <laughs> If that makes sense. So uh, without, I'm not going to open this because I did earlier and it took me 10 minutes to close it. But if you could see at the top of this, 
Um, it's almost mushed in just slightly right there. And when you open this, you really have to fiddle with this area to get the lid to reclose and fit on there and get the latch to go on there. And the reason why is because in the 1980s, sometimes people sat on their lunchboxes. Kids would take their lunchboxes maybe on the bus and sit on them, or when they were waiting to go to lunch or something like that, they would sit on them. Uh, I would not recommend sitting on one today, especially if you're a big, giant, grown-up person like I am. Uh, but that's sometimes what happened. I even remember kids standing on their lunch boxes from time to time. And so a lot of times that's what you will find if you look at this. It's kind of hard to see, but it does. There's a very slight, especially on this part right here, it does just slightly bow in and that makes it difficult to shut and, and uh, you kind of have to massage the metal. Uh, there's nothing inside this one. The other one that I have does have the thermos, but uh, we will maybe we'll get to that as we work all the way through our shelves. But um, so this is the Heathcliff lunchbox. It's definitely worth uh, the $10 that I paid for it. Uh, even, even though I had a second one, it was worth $10 just to find out. You can find uh, Heathcliff is not particularly a popular character today. And so these lunch boxes are pretty inexpensive. I looked this morning, I saw one available on eBay for uh, $35, which is, uh, um, you know, anywhere from 20 to $30 is kind of what I expect to pay for um, a metal lunch box. Uh, $20 is a good deal. Uh, even if it doesn't have a thermos, you know, so, um, but that's, uh, uh, like I said, when I, I have the other one that I have up on my shelf for display, this is the way I have it because I, I like the uh, video game tie in the, uh, space invaders thing. So, uh, that's everything I have to say about the Heathcliff lunchbox. Tune in tomorrow to find out what's on the lunch menu.